All right, so in case you want to see real 3D instead of fake 3D, yay, okay, am I on the wrong side? Is that better? All right, so if I'm holding up on this side and then I drop it, what will happen? Will it fall? Okay. Which way is the torque? That way, right? It's into the board. You should be really impressed. Okay, so physics hasn't been broken yet. So the torque is... I mean, that's not very radical. Why does this happen? Well, the torque being into the board causes a time rate of change of the angular momentum, which starts at zero. So which way does the angular momentum point after it's begun its fall into the board? So it falls this way. Nobody is shocked. Nobody is surprised. It makes perfect sense. All right, so <clears throat> now I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to spin it as shown here. And what should happen? So what will be the direction of the torque? Same, right? Nothing has changed about that. I got to spin it the right way, so that's towards you, right? Like this. Pathetically right-handed. <clears throat> okay, so which way is the angular momentum? Angular momentum is that way. Okay, so which way is the change in the angular momentum going to be when I let go? So what will happen? Okay, it needed to develop a component that way, so it started rotating that way. This motion is called precession. So there's two, besides the wobble, there's two kinds of angular motion. There's the rapid spin about the axle, and there's the slow rotation about the vertical. Yes, sir? So if the wheel wasn't slowing down, like if the wheel didn't decelerate, right. if the wheel were, say that again. If the wheel were moving at a constant angular velocity, would it still rotate about that? Axle? You mean a constant angular velocity about its axle? He wants to know if the wheel were rotating at a constant angular velocity about the axle. So I get rid of all friction and all air resistance, and I do the same thing. Would this happen? Or is this entirely because of friction? That's the question. What do you say? You're now the consultant. Okay, so let's look at some pictures. So the angular momentum of the wheel when it's spinning is aligned with the angular velocity. And this is at a point before I let go, but when I let go, if I use this as my fixed reference point, the gravitational torque is into the board. So there ought to be a, a change in this big vector that points into the screen. Well, if it did what the wheel did before and just fell down so that the, the axle changed, then this big angular momentum vector would change in what direction? It would go down, right? So if I start here and I go 
down that way, the change would be down. How much torque is there on the wheel in the downward direction? No, well, the only torque that I see, if I can neglect friction, we can get to friction and worry about what direction that might be, but, but the, the dominant force, the big force on the wheel is its mass times the acceleration due to gravity, and that's pulling down where? At the center of mass, which by the symmetry of the wheel is about at the axle. So that pulls down here, and that's trying, as we saw before, to make the wheel fall over. But if it were to fall over, then the angular momentum for the spin about the axle which was large this way would now have to be large down below, which means a big change down. But there is no torque causing the change in the angular momentum in that direction. The direction of the torque, I thought we agreed, was into the board. So the direction of the change in the angular momentum has to be in the y direction. So it, the, the big value of L of angular momentum, the spin angular momentum of the bicycle wheel, which is initially aligned along X, must develop a component along Y because, well, torque causes the change in angular momentum, so therefore if I wait a very small time, the change in the angular momentum will be equal to the torque times a little time interval. So as I wait, the change in the angular momentum has to be in the direction of the torque. 